Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, saved people, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body a living sacrifice. There's some people, oh, I'll die for God. Paul says living. God can't use a dead Christian. When we wake up every morning, we ought to pray to God and say, God, what can I do for you today? What can my sacrifice this day be for you? A living sacrifice. Holy. Oh, we're supposed to be holy before God. That's impossible. We're sinners. Paul says, holy. Acceptable unto God. Everything we do be in concordance of what God says and wants. Which is your reasonable service. It's just reasonable. We ought to be living. We ought to be holy. We ought to be acceptable unto God. That's reasonable. And many are not. For what Christ has done for us and all what God has done for us, it is reasonable for us to give back to him. And be not conformed to this world. There it is. You're not to be worldly. You're to be living, holy, and acceptable. Not worldly. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Refresh your mind. You are a new creature now. Put that old man back in the grave. Put that flesh down. That ye may prove what is that good. So you got to renew your mind to the new creature that you are by being living to God, by being holy to God, by being acceptable to God, that you can know what is right and what is wrong. And you're not going to do that in the flesh. And every time you do it in the flesh, it's not acceptable. It's not holy. That ye may prove that. Yeah, you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So in order to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable God, you got to put your mind to do it. And you got to know by your mind what God expects. You cannot know what God wants from you if you never read your Bible. You cannot know what God does not expect from you by not reading your Bible. And many people come, well, oh, I let my light shine, I blah, blah, blah. And you never open up the Bible, you never have anything to know what God has to say. It's funny, when you do a street ministry as we do as a family, Jesus wouldn't do that. Idiot, you just sign say that you never read your Bible. Just keep your mouth shut. Because when you come up and say something as idiot as that, to say, hey, yes, Jesus did do it. And that's acceptable to God because God's told us to do it. For I say, through the grace even unto me, to every man that is among you, and he wrote to Christians, my brethren, verse 1, that every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Oh, look what I am. Look who I am. Ooh, Paul says, not get off. Get off that pride. No Christian anywhere say, well, I'm proud of. No. Proud and pride are not Christian words and ought not to be used. God says, well done. Uh, my son did well. My son was well done what he did. As a church, you guys are doing well. As an individual, I like what you're doing. And there, oh, I got pride. I'm so proud of you. But to think soberly, and that doesn't mean intoxicated, it means straight. On the level. Because if you think yourself on the level, you wouldn't be raising yourself up. You'd be like, oh yeah, how many times did I sin today? How many times did I let my flesh get away? Oh, I'm not so good, am I? According as God has dwelt to every man 
the measure of faith. So there's different measures of faith to different men. There are some people that have more faith than others and others who have less faith by what God's given to them by their living holy, being accepted by setting their mind to do right with God. A person who's not in the book, not trying to serve God, is not going to have the true faith that someone that is serving and doing right. There are Christians right now, if the rapture would happen right now, they would be totally angry because they won't get to see the Super Bowl next year. I'm serious. There will be Christians who are so upset that they never had a marriage date. No one ever asked them to marry. They didn't get to be top CEO. There will be things that will make them upset when the Lord comes. I guarantee it. My faith is resting upon Lord right now. Let's go. All right. If not right now, then I'm to give to you living. I'm to be holy. I'm to do what you want me to do. And still have the faith that you're coming. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Everybody in a church is not the pastor. Everybody in the church is not a missionary. Well, we're all, yeah, we'll take that one back. We're told to go out in all the world, told to go in our neighborhoods. So we're, we're evangelists. Not everybody in the church has the riches. Some are poor, some are broke, some are, are unhealthy, some are healthy. Some have cars, some don't have cars. So we being many are one body in Christ. We're all together, though we're different. A thumb does not look like the big toe, and a big toe doesn't look like a thumb. But it's my body. And everyone and every one member is one of another. So we're one big member of Christ's body. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Now here are gifts. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy. According to the proportion of faith. I'm a prophet. Really? I can tell people where they're going to go based upon what they do with Jesus Christ. I can tell them that Jesus Christ is coming one day for the church called the rapture. I can tell you there's a seven year tribulation period, three and a half years tribulation, three and a half years great tribulation. That's prophecy. Out of the Bible. Oh, I'm, I ain't going to tell you the winning lottery numbers. I ain't going to tell you that someone's going to come into your life or someone's not going to come into you. I can't do that prophesying. But I can do godly prophesying. Not many people can do that. There are elderly people in, in a church, you know, they're just there. They want to do right, the best ability, and they may have forgotten, may never learn. There are children in a church. Oh, they're, they're a blessing in the church. They may not know. They may not be able to explain the, the, the mark of the beast and all that. That's not to them to give. Prophecy is a gift. That's a lot better than tongues. Because I could tell a man where he's going to go. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, that's a bunch of garbage. Or ministry. Let us wait on our ministering. Uh-oh. See, some people think ministry is get up in that pulpit. Teach the Bible. Ministry means you take care of the people when they need your help. Minister, re, let us wait on our ministering. Ministry is taking care of the people. That's the ministry. And if your life is just behind a pulpit and that's it, and you don't do anything for your congregation, you, you're not a minister. You're just a preacher. A minister would go in and pray with those that need prayer and visit those that are sick and help those that need help. That's a minister. I've known some preachers where they've gone and changed the toilets for old people in their homes because they can't do it. That's ministry. When you go to the hospital room to visit your, your sick people, that's ministry. When you take time to help a, a, a husband and wife who's having trouble, that's ministry. 
Anybody can preach from a pulpit. Ministry and sacrificing your time. Or he that teaches on teaching. Oh, so here's teaching now. Here's taking the book and exposing, ex show, ex showing, explaining. Teaching and ministry is not the same thing. Or he that extor ex exhorted or exhortation. Now that's preaching. That is a person that gets up there and say, you're doing wrong. This is how to be done. This is the correct way. So we got ministry, we got teaching, we got a preacher. Three different offices. And they are gifts given to some people and not given to others. A woman who can teach a Sunday school class is not qualified by the Bible to preach before men. But she can teach a Sunday school class. A woman could go on the street and prophesy to lost people and tell them where they're going to go. But she can't preach. She can get on the street and teach people, open a Bible, say, this is what you need to do. That's not pre. See, some people, well, a woman is she, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is she preaching or is she teaching or prophesying? Where's the office? Because Paul has defined four offices here. Preach is when you assert the authority of God into someone's life and, hey, you're wrong. Judge not least. No, no, there's no judge not least. You be judged. I am going from the Bible and I am flat telling you out. And usually with preaching, there's no one to, to rebuke you. Teaching, you can have to say, I got a question. Yeah, what's the question? Prophesying, you can deal with them and they can have questions for you or they can retaliate against you, use words against you. He that give he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. So giving's another one. Not everybody's able to give. Giving is a gift. You can give God something, that's a gift. Do it simple. He that ruleth with diligence. There are people in a church or a house where hey, you're the ruler. You better do it with the utmost authority and make sure you're doing it to the capability that God's given you. These are gifts. He that shows mercy, ooh, mercy is a gift. With cheerfulness. Do it with happiness. He didn't think those things were gifts. And they are too much today. And it's, you know, gifts of tongues. Gifts of healing. Did you see any tongues in there? Did you see any healing in there? The one that needs to be healed, why don't you give him a little ministry of helping him? Why don't you show him a little mercy? Why don't you give some things that he may need? That, see, look at those gifts. A lot better than healing. Because God may not heal him. Let love be without dissimulation. That's false pretense. A hypocrite. Love to love. Abhor that which is evil. Oh, if it's evil, extremely hate it. You know, today people put in the love, love. What's that say? When you get somebody who's trying to pervert the gospel, trying to pervert children, trying to pervert people from God, you're to abhor it. Cleave, that means join to that which is good. Be angry at the evil, and if it's good, join yourself to it. Be angry they're correcting Bibles. Get yourself the Bible that is the Bible, the King James. Get it in your arms. Be kindly affectionate, affectionate one to another with brotherly love. Now this is the brethren, verse 12. A more intense love to the brethren. Too many people show their love to the outside of the brethren, to the world, more than they do to the brethren. Be kindly afflicted one to another with brotherly love and honor. Ooh, honor. 
Respect your pastor. Respect the deacons. Respect the treasurer. Those are hard jobs. Respect an old person. That's gone today. You find your child disrespecting an old person, you take them home and you bow inside their back end so they learn to respect an elder. Respect a serviceman in uniform. Honor. Prefer one another. Not slothful in business. When at work, you're doing your job. You're not at the water cooler all the time. You're not drinking coffee all the time. You are doing your job. Best to the ability. Ain't nothing to do at that time, and there's nothing separate. Try to learn more for your job. Try to do next week's work. Get that going. Fervent in spirit. Alive, well, on fire, serving the Lord, not your flesh, not the world, not your boss. If your boss is unsaved, okay, you're, you've been hired. Serve your boss by serving the Lord. I am doing this not for this lost man. I'm doing it for you, Lord. Rejoicing. In hope. Jesus Christ, our blessed hope. Patient in tribulation. That's a hard one. Because who wants tribulation to last? Who wants it? You want it over with. Continue. Continuing instant in prayer. Anything that comes up, you ought to be instant in prayer. Right away. Time to pray. Drop down pray. Distributing to the necessity of saints. If there's somebody who is saved and has a need, and the need is a true need, what's it say? Given to hospitality. That's where the word hospital comes from. Help, need. Generous, politefulness, even if you don't want to, even that person is not worthy. Bless them which persecute you, make them happy. That's kind of hard when you got a street ministry because you know, you know how they want to be happy, they want you to shut up, they don't want you to come back. I had a guy one time, and he's saying it, and I took the open Bible and I went after him. Not because of anger, not be. Listen, the guy kept asking the question. I had the Bible answer. If he would, he didn't. But if he would have seen the answer that he kept asking, that should have made him happy. Bless them which which persecute you. Bless and curse not. It would be very good for you as a Christian. Someone's door, you knocked on their door, and, and they don't, they're persecuting you. You're sitting there cussing them and giving them a hard time and, and curse you in the name of Jesus. That's not a good testimony. That's the flesh. See, your flesh doesn't want to give the hospitality. Your flesh does not want to give. Your flesh doesn't have no hope. Your flesh wants to sit at the, at the, at the job site and not do nothing. Today, they want to sit at the job site and play with their stupid computers on their phone. Seen it. They don't want to show love. They want, the flesh wants love. All this, the flesh, it wants to be selfish. It doesn't want to help others. It doesn't want to do anything with others. And Paul is saying, get away from the flesh. Get that new nature. Get that new mind. Be that new man. Step out and make your flesh angry. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. They're happy. Hey Amen. Go ahead. I'm so glad you're happy. And weep with them that weep. Oh, keep you my prayers. I'm sorry it's happened. Be of the same mind one to another. 
the principles of, of Christianity. Christ died for our sins. He was virgin born. He's coming to take us. We have a blessed hope. All those things that we have the same thing. We all have grace. We all have mercy. You can't have the same mind when someone says that Jesus is not God. You can't have the same mind when somebody says, well, if I eat Jesus, I can be saved. There's a problem there. You can't have the same mind when somebody doesn't want to have anything to do with Jesus Christ. That's not the same mind. Somebody doesn't love the Lord Jesus Christ and you do, you're not the same mind. Mind not high things. Uh, that'd be positions, money. Who cares about that stuff. The goals. But condescend to men of low estate. Be humble and you won't stumble. Don't get, again, that high thing. Pride, lofty. You know, lofty up in the attic. Don't be that. Be low. Be not wise in your own conceits. You don't know nothing. You're nobody. There's thousands of other Christians the Lord is paying attention to right now at this moment. You may not be on his mind right now. Recompense to no man evil for evil. That's the golden rule. Do unto others as others do unto you. Paul says, no, don't do that. When you hear a Christian say, I do unto... You're violating Romans. You're violating the church epistles. You're violating what God's told Paul to tell us. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. You better be honest in every man saved or lost that you do. I could probably give, give you a list of names of Christians I know who hasn't done that. Honest. That means not lying. And when you tell lies, you violated Romans chapter 12, verse 17. Because you didn't provide honesty. To all people. If it be possible. Now if it be possible. As much as lieth in you. Live peacefully with all men. Paul says. Give it your greatest. And your best shot. But you know what. You two may not get along. You may not get along with him. Try. Give it effort. But. Not everybody's gonna get along. Not everybody's gonna be friendly, friendly to each other. Some people are going to just hate you for what and who you are, and you're not gonna have a peaceful relationship. And if you cover up with, oh, I'll just be nice to go, I'll go over there, you're not providing things honest, are you? Now, kids, let's just act right while we go over auntie's house and just behave yourselves. I know she's a pain in the butt, this and all that, but just be nice. It's Christmas. You're lying. You just better tell that, hey, listen, I can't stand what's going on in your house. It has nothing to do with God. I'm not going. <gasps> what the heck with you? <gasps> I'm going to serve God and do right. That's honest. You guys drink drink and smoke in that house. I ain't going there. That's honest. And I can live peacefully as much with you, but when it comes to that drinking and that smoking, no. That's honest. To that point, I got to draw a line. You're gonna, listen, I won't have anything to do with my dad. Every time I talk, he uses God's name in vain. He talks about worldly, fleshy endeavors and stuff like that. I don't want it. I want to use my dad, but I don't want to be anywhere around you with that language and that talk. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay. And my grandmother always forget to say, saith the Lord. 
shield of form. She would quote, vengeance is mine, I will repay, and then not finish the verse. And I would always remind her, say it to Lord, Grandma. No, let God take care of it. I think we're, as a family, we saw one time we were again uh, just battling it out with the street ministry with one person. And we just prayed, Lord, say, Lord, you know, listen, I'm not telling you to kill the guy. I'm not telling you to, but, you know, he's just destructive. Can we have our time? And then can he have his time? In the last three or four weeks, we haven't even seen the guy come. I suppose he's still making money doing what he does, but he's just not interrupting the, the ministry of the gospel. Let God take care of it. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heat coals of fire on his head. Ouch! Sounds kind of wrong, doesn't it, though? I'm going to burn his head with, with, with gener generosity and hospitality and blessing him and helping him. And the end return is going to get a burned head. That's his conscience. That would be God working on him saying, you didn't see everything you're doing to my son, my child. Be not overcome of evil. But overcome evil with good. For everything that wrong happens to you, you return it with good. That's hard to do. That moment. Be angry. This verse. It says, be angry and sin not. But be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil. There's sometimes some stuff happens to you and you are in the flesh. You are a sinner. And then... Just a total mess, a total rumpus. And then we violate what, what God just told us to do. Get good for the evil. And verses 17 to 21 are people who are outside the church. They're not Christians. So, the golden rule is foolishness.